Dr. Shepard here. I want to talk to you guys today about panic attacks. So panic attacks suck. Um, I know a lot of you have probably had them. They're actually pretty common. About 30% of the population will have a panic attack at some point in their lives. Um, for most people, this is something that will recur occasionally. So if you had one panic attack, you're at risk for more panic attacks. And if you start to develop a fear of having the panic attacks, that's something entirely different. So that can become something called panic disorder. That's much less common. It occurs in about one to 2% of the population, but it's something that can be extremely disabling. Um, thankfully, it is very, very treatable. And with the right combination of usually medications and therapy, it's something you can absolutely get through. So I wanna teach you guys today a couple of ways that I've learned to manage panic attacks. And if you're new here, please consider hitting subscribe and pushing that notifications bell so you know every time I post a new video and you can keep up with all of the important stuff about your mental health. So I use four major techniques to manage panic attacks. I remind people that the panic attacks are not dangerous. Because of that, I advise them to lean into the discomfort associated with the panic attack. We go through some grounding exercises. And then finally, we address negative thought processes associated with the panic attacks. So with those four things in mind, we're gonna go through each of them and kind of talk about what you can do next time you have a panic attack. All right, so number one, knowing that panic attacks are not dangerous. So I am confident in that panic attacks are not something that is going to cause you any serious harm. But a hallmark of panic attacks is actually the thought that it is going to cause you serious problems, that you're going to die, or some people will think they're going to go crazy. And it's also just a physically really uncomfortable situation to be in having a panic attack. Um, it sucks and it feels awful and you kind of do feel like you're dying. Um, and so it can be really easy to trick your brain into thinking that something really catastrophic and awful is happening. But once you get that initial workup from your doctor and anybody that started having panic attacks should see their doctor and get that cleared so that they know that there's not an underlying medical condition going on. Once your doctor says, okay, yeah, this is a panic attack. You know, you're, everything looks fine. Everything checks out okay. Then you know that it's not something dangerous. It's not something that's going to hurt you or cause you any lasting damage. And it's actually okay if you're having them. You will be okay and you will absolutely survive. It's also really important and really comforting to note that panic attacks don't last forever. So about 20 minutes is kind of the longest duration for a panic attack. Um, sometimes I've heard that they can last longer than that. Most of the time they're shorter, but on average, I would say about 20 minutes is sort of the longest you can expect a panic attack to run. And this is because panic attacks kind of involve activation of what we call the sympathetic nervous system or the flight or fight response. That causes the secretion of neurotransmitters that are very excitatory and get you kind of revved up. And the end result is an elevation in blood pressure and heart rate that is going to help you prepare along with some other physiological changes to run away or fight the thing that you're afraid of. With all of the changes happening in your body during this fight or flight response, you can imagine it's pretty exhausting for your body. So that's why the panic attack can't last forever. At some point, the hormones get degraded, the neurotransmitters start to balance out with the inhibitory neurotransmitters, and your parasympathetic nervous system starts to kick in. And that's the more relaxing, we call it the rest and digest nervous system. So at some point your body is gonna say, I'm done with this, we gotta take it down a notch. And the panic attack will resolve itself even if you don't do anything to change it. So it's not gonna last forever. Okay, so number two, now that we know that panic attacks are not dangerous and eventually will subside on their own, we can do something called leaning into the discomfort. So why in the world would we wanna lean into the discomfort of a panic attack? Well, because that's the best way to help you through the panic attack. So trying to resist anything that your mind throws out at you is a surefire way to get it to stick around longer. Let me give you an example. 
So right now, I want you to not think of an elephant wearing a pink skirt. Don't think about it. No, nope, get that out of your mind. Uh, stop thinking about it. I see you thinking about it. Look, you're imagining that elephant with its pink skirt and it does look cute, but I told you not to think about it. Okay, so of course the first thing that popped into your head was the elephant in the pink skirt, right? Anytime you try to resist a thought like that, you're bringing your attention to it and causing it to stick around longer. So the same thing with panic attacks. If we sort of embrace them and allow them to be there without trying to push them away, that can make it a lot more bearable and also allow them to subside a little bit quicker. All right, number three, let's talk about grounding techniques. So grounding techniques are a way to bring your attention back to the present. So when we're in the midst of a panic attack and when it's sort of in that stage of propagating itself, we're thinking about anything but the present. So we're thinking about how our racing heart might mean that something terrible is happening, how uncomfortable we are, how we can't stand these panic attacks, how we don't ever want to have another panic attack and how this is never going to get better. I'm never going to feel better. I'm not, you know, all of these horrible catastrophic things that keep the panic attack going. So with grounding yourself, the purpose is to bring your attention back to the present where you're safe. Even if you're uncomfortable, you are safe in that moment and you are secure in that moment. It is also really helpful to get your mind thinking about something else. So if you are thinking about the present moment and thinking about some of these grounding techniques, there's less space in your brain to be thinking about and fearing the panic attack and it starts to dissipate on its own. So what are some examples of grounding techniques? There are a lot of different grounding techniques that you can use. If you just sort of Google that or look on YouTube for different um, videos, you can find a lot of different stuff. So I really like body scans. So sort of bringing the attention to different areas of your body and feeling different sensations in each area of your body. Progressive muscle relaxation similarly is kind of bringing attention to different areas of your body and then usually tensing and then relaxing the muscles. Um, another really good one is just plain old mindfulness practice. So maybe focusing on the breath or something like that and bringing the attention back to the breath whenever your mind wanders away. I also like techniques that are going to sort of distract you. Um, like I talked about a little bit earlier. So I also really like techniques that are going to activate all of the different senses. So a way to really connect yourself with the present is by activating each of your five senses so that you can kind of bring yourself into the moment. So an example of this would be to look around and identify five different things that you can see around you. And then four different things that you can touch three different things that you can hear, two different things you can smell, and one thing that you can taste. And you can switch those up and do it in any order, but you'll notice that the instructions are a little bit complicated, right? So we're looking for five, four, three, two, one, different senses, and it might be a little bit hard to do, right? Like how are you gonna find two different things to smell? You'll have to be a little bit creative, and that's part of the point because that's what helps distract you. I find that for taste sensations, um, something that is a strong taste for the same reasons, right? Like we want to really shock ourselves back into the present, that can be extra effective. So if you have like something bold tasting, like dark chocolate, um, maybe something sour, something like that, that is gonna really grab your attention. And not just for this, grounding exercise in particular, but you know, that on its own during a panic attack can be super helpful. All right. So last tip for you guys, I want you to work on eliminating the negative thoughts associated with panic attacks in people that have recurrent panic attacks and develop panic disorder. These negative thoughts about the panic attacks are probably the biggest problem that they face and the biggest reason that their panic attacks continue to recur, and the biggest reason that they start to find it really difficult to function in day-to-day -day life. So I'll give you an example of some negative thoughts that people associate with panic attacks. So one would be that they're weak for having panic attacks, 
that they can't stand the panic attacks, that they hate them, they're uncomfortable, they strongly dislike them, um, that they can't do X, Y, and Z because of panic attacks, that they will never get better, that they will always have this problem, and that other people don't have this problem. So you can fill in the blanks. There are about a million other negative thoughts that I've heard people having with panic attacks, but the bottom line is panic attacks in and of themselves cannot hurt you, right? We talked about that. They cannot hurt you. They also cannot stop you from doing anything that you want to do. Bottom line, you might be incredibly uncomfortable and you might be really struggling with a panic attack, but physically you are still able to move your body and do the things that you have to do, right? So it's not physically taking you and chaining you down somewhere and causing you to miss out on life. So you move with the panic attack, prove to yourself that you can do those things when you're having a panic attack. The things about panic attacks being something that happens to weak people, it's just not true and it's also not helpful. So whenever you find yourself thinking those thoughts, say, you know what, hold up, Dr. Sharper told me not allowed to do it. So I'm gonna bring my attention to another thought. It's again, not helpful, not true. And it's something that's going to make the panic attacks ultimately worse because you're thinking about your inability to manage. And that low confidence in yourself is something that the panic attacks really thrive on. All right, so I hope that those four things were really helpful. Um, there is a lot more to panic attack management than I was able to give you in this short video, uh, but I will continue making videos about this and hopefully you will like this video. Um, if you do hit the like button so that I know that you want more info on panic attacks. And also if you haven't already hit subscribe, turn on the notifications bell so that you don't miss when I post a video. I hope you guys are having a great day and Please don't let the panic attacks bring you down. Stay tuned for more info on how to beat them.